Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Yes, I realize it has been a while since I have uploaded a video. I am so sorry for that. We have been busy with work, vacations, and many other things that are going on in the world right now that I just haven't been motivated to m make a video or edit a video or anything. Uh, today what I'm going to be doing is making a red velvet cake with cream cheese frosting. Yes, now doesn't that sound delicious? I'm making it for my family that is supposed to be returning tomorrow from vacation, and I'm really excited. And yes, it's been a while that, yes, my hair is a little bit purple. It's been purple for almost a month now, but I haven't cared to show it. Anyways, disclaimer on this video, if you're a professional baker or know someone that's a professional baker, yes, I'm aware if I am making mistakes, this is my first time making this recipe this cake and so if you are trying to follow along don't always follow everything that i say because i might be making mistakes because i just decided to make this but let's get right into the video and here's the equipment that you would need for this cake. all right here is the equipment that you need to make the cake not the frosting part i will show the equipment for the frosting when we get to that you are going to need a cooling rack to keep the cake cooled and if you have a cake platter that's great too I do not so I am going to be using a cookie sheet you are also going to, to need measuring cups a wet measuring cup some spray for the pans measuring spoons a sifter Two circle pans, if you can, you can use also use a sheet. They're said to use two of those, but I only have one. And then a hand mixer with the attachments. If you don't have the attachments, then you can use a hand whisk and a spoon or a spatula to mix. And you can also use a kitchen aid and some music because this is going to take a while. And of course you need an oven. All right, here are the ingredients for the cake. The dry ingredients are granulated white sugar, all-purpose white flour, confectionery sugar, or powdered sugar, whatever you want to call it, baking soda, salt, baking powder, baking cocoa, I mean, sorry, cocoa, or just regular cocoa powder, and the wet ingredients that you're going to need are buttermilk, which was extremely hard to find, but you can use that. Vanilla extract, red food dye, and cooking oil. I am using vegetable oil. You can use whatever oil you want to. And if you think that some of this is unhealthy, I do not have the substitutions for them. You will have to look them up up yourself if you're making a smaller cake then you have to do all the conversions yourself this is just what i have for my cake all right before i start baking this disclaimer if you hear noises in the background there is a youtube video going in the background because my brother is here and he's watching that and plus there's a bunch of fans going on because it is summertime so sorry for all the noise interruption if you can't hear anything Anyways, first what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to preheat your oven. If you are in the U.S., it is 320 Fahrenheit. If you are in the U.K. or somewhere over on the other side of the ocean, it's going to be 160 Celsius. And you're going to make sure that you press start so it's preheated. And then you're going to want to wash your hands before you start mixing everything together. Alright, step number two, you're going to want to grease up your pan you can use Pam olive oil spray whatever you find to make it not stick to the pan and then you're not gonna want to rub it down if you put a lot on there or you can just leave it as follows I didn't care to mention but you will also need a lot of mixing bowls otherwise it's just not fun to mix it on the countertop all right one of the first steps into mixing these together is you are going to be sifting your flour, your baking 
cocoa powder, your baking soda, and your salt. And here is the measurements. You're going to need, for these measurements, you are going to need two and a half cups of flour or 315 grams of flour. You're also going to need two tablespoons of the cocoa powder. You are also going to need one teaspoon of baking soda. Teaspoon, not tablespoon. And you're going to need a half teaspoon of salt. What you're going to do, I'm not going to put them in there. I'll show you when they're in there already. Is you're going to put them in the sifter. And then you're going to shake so that it will sift through this into the mixing bowl. I got a bigger mixing bowl because I realized I didn't know how much flour I was actually going to be using until now. Alright, here's all the ingredients in the bowl. And what you're basically going to do is you're just going to sift and sift and sift until you get it all down in there and it's all full you full of like um, smaller bits and pieces and if there's any on the top here that means that that you don't need that you can do this two or three times it doesn't matter just as long as it gets sift through so i'm going to sift that and i'll show you so there is the sift mix, so yes you can tell it dig a little bit everywhere and there in there is all the stuff that couldn't be sifted through and I didn't care to mention but I'll try to edit that part in that you are going to need three eggs. I didn't notice that I didn't have that out because it is a refrigerator item and what you're going to do is you're going to stick them in a separate bowl with a pinch of salt and you are going to whisk them with either you can do it with your kitchen aid your hand mixer with the attachment if you have it i do or you can do it with a hand whisk and you're going to whisk it for two minutes and then once you whisk it for two minutes you're going to add your granulated sugar one tablespoon at a time and for this you are going to need one and a half cups or 300 grams of white granulated sugar I will show you what it looks like when it is finished. Alright, if it will focus here. So that's what the mix looks like. You want to make sure that it is light and fluffy once you have all that sugar in there. If it is too thick, that means that you added too much sugar. If it is too wet and like drippy, that means you don't have enough sugar. But what you are going to do after that is you are going to then add in very slowly, you're going to add in your buttermilk, which the, I'm trying to think, the measurement for buttermilk is one cup or 250 milliliters. And then you're going to add in your cooking oil or your vegetable oil or whatever. And the measurement for that is three-fourths cups or 160 milliliters and then you're gonna add in your vanilla which is two teaspoons yes teaspoons of vanilla extract and then two tablespoons of red food dye you can do the exact measurements for the red food dye if you have enough for it if you do not take your best guess and put as much as you want in there because depending on how much food dye you in there it depends how light or how dark the red velvet cake will be and then I will show you the after fact. All right, so this is what everything that I had was put in there. Yes, you can tell that the red food dye kind of went in there because I was at the end of the container. I did find a flaw in the recipe that I am using. It says that you need baking powder, but in the directions, it never says when to put the baking powder in. And of course you need baking powder in a cake for your cake to be able to rise because it is like yeast and so what I'm going to do is I am going to add into my baking powder into my dry mix before I put it into this mix and what you're going to do is you're going to want to use one third of the dry mix in this with a whisk and then after that it's going to get a little bit harder so you can either use a different hand mixer attachment like I had where you can use a spoon or a spatula whatever helps you you just want to want to fold those in so they make a nice 
mixture. So for the measurement for the baking powder, if you had seen the flaw with me, it is one teaspoon of baking powder. Please do not forget the baking powder, otherwise your cake will not rise. It might even deflate, like it might try to rise and then it won't. So here's what it looks like with those two together. All right, here's the mixture all mixed up and you'll know that it is done when there are no lumps and you cannot find any just stray flour in there. If you do, that means that you did not mix it enough and you gotta go back in there and mix it again. Like I said, you can always use uh, something else to mix other than the attachments on things I did because I have enough strength and what you are gonna do now is if you are using these kind of circle containers depending on how many layers you are doing you are gonna pour them into the pans if you are using it like a sheet cake pan you can just put it all in there if you are doing it like this maybe there's two you're gonna want to put half or how many you're dividing up for and then you're going to Stick it in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes and make sure that when it is done that you check it with a skewer and if the skewer comes out clean that means that it's baked through enough. If it comes back wet with mixture on it you might need to put it, keep it in there for another uh, maybe two to five minutes depending. Just make sure that you're checking to make sure that it does not burn. And then you are going to, once it comes out, make sure you use a pot holder. You are going to put it on your cooling rack to cool down because you cannot frost cake if it is hot because it will melt the frosting and it will not look good. So let me show you what it looks like after it's done baking. And after, when it is baking, you can either do the following options. You can put away your ingredients that you don't need anymore and clean up, do the dishes, wipe the table off, the countertop, or sweep, or you can start preparing the frosting. I am going to stop, I am going to start preparing the frosting, so I will show you what the equipment and the ingredients for that are. Alright, here is the equipment for making the cream cheese frosting you are going to need measuring cups for the dry ingredients if you have one of these I suggest you use it for your butter and your cream cheese because they are sticky and very thick and they are hard to measure measuring cups they do have all the measurements on them with cups and teaspoons and milliliters and ounces and all that is very helpful you're also going to need uh, one tablespoon, one teaspoon, a half tablespoon, and a one-fourth teaspoon. And then you're also going to need your hand mixer with an attachment, or you can use your KitchenAid, or you can use a spoon, spatula, etc. And of course, you're going to need a mixing bowl to mix it in, which I still don't have out, because why would I mention that in the equipment part? And here are the ingredients for making the cream cheese frosting. Of course, you're gonna need cream cheese. You're gonna need, you can have either unsalted or salted butter, I just found that out. And you're gonna want it softened. If it is not softened and you just took it out of your freezer, if it's hot outside, maybe you could go put it in your vehicle or you can put it in a windowsill. I just put mine in a windowsill and it, I left it for a while and now it is pretty soft. If you are in a wintry, cold, climate you might want to put it in the microwave for a couple seconds just make sure that it doesn't melt and it's just softening because it's not going to work as well if it's melted you're going to need vanilla extract again you're going to need salt again and then i also said that you were going to use powdered sugar or confectionery sugar in the cake but you were not you're using in the frosting you're going to need some lemon juice and some milk or you can use whipping cream. I don't have whipping cream so I am using milk. So this is how you make the frosting. For the first part, the first step to making your frosting is you're going to want to cream together your cream cheese and your softened salt or unsalted butter 
with your hand mixer or whatever you're using. I did suggest that you should use this if you do not have the correct measurements. If you do, then that's great. The measurements for the cream cheese is eight ounces or 225 grams of cream cheese. So the whole entire thing of this, if you have the full package, if you don't, then you'll have to add those together and do all that extra work. And then you're gonna need a half cup or 113 grams of your butter. And of course, a whole stick of butter equals a half cup. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna cream those together for about three minutes until it is light and fluffy. So here is what it looks like after that is done. So this is what it looks like when it is creamed together. Next thing, what you're gonna do is you are going to add in your cream or your milk and your vanilla extract, your salt, and your lemon juice all into that. You're gonna mix that again. You are not gonna mix the powdered sugar confectioner sugar in there yet. You're gonna do that afterwards because depending on how much you actually get in there will depend on how stiff your frosting will be or how light it is. If it is too light for you, you can always add more. If it is too stiff, you can add more milk or cream to it. I will show you what it looks like after I add all that, but make sure when you are doing your baking powder, you're not baking powder, your powdered sugar, that you do a little bit at a time so you're not just jumping right into it and it gets everywhere. So this is what it looks like after. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention the measurements for this because why would I tell you the measurements? Uh, you're going to need two tablespoons of milk or cream, a half tablespoon of lemon juice, uh, one fourth teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then for your powdered sugar, you're going to need three and three fourths cups or 450 grams of your powdered sugar. So this is what my frosting looks like after I put it all. I did not use all the powdered sugar. I just used all the powdered sugar that I had because it did not add up to be the correct measurements for it. And the more that I did it, the more thick it got. So I just did all I had so it would look like this. I even did a little bit of a taste test. Shush. And it did taste pretty good. Uh, I did do the fork test on my first cake and you can probably tell I had to do it twice. Uh, it was still pretty moist um, the first time around, so I put it back in there for about another five minutes to eight minutes because it was taking forever for it to be stick through. But I did it again, and so it is coming. It's gonna cool now, and so while that is cooling, I'm gonna then flip it over onto the pan and then start my second one. During this time, I'm going to be doing my dishes, putting away the ingredients that I have, making sure everything is nice and neat, and making sure everything is cooled and ready for when I decorate my cake. So, tune in for that. So, it's a couple days later, and I did not film me frosting my cake because my phone died and I was having problems with it being charged but the picture of the cake should be somewhere down below here what I ended up doing is I ended up frosting the bottom layer the top part of the bottom layer and then I put the top layer on top and the, when I took the top layer out of the oven actually a chunk of the cake like came out when I was trying to take it out of the pan for some reason so I had to frost over that, so there's a big frost hole somewhere. And then I ended up uh, putting the frosting over all that and all around the cake and it was really hard and it was my first attempt at doing this and it was not fun. But apparently people said that they liked it, my family said that they enjoyed it and I haven't been able to try it yet but I will try it eventually. But for a first attempt, I think this went really well. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. 
and subscribe down below for more videos and also turn on the notification bell for whenever I'm not lazy and I have motivation to make videos and once again I am super sorry that there hasn't been a video or the angle that I am at I'm getting ready for work right now and I just remembered that I had to do this for the video and if you like these kind of videos with the baking and all that, uh, let me know down below what you should see me do next because I really enjoy doing this and I really think I should do more. Or if you want to see more of my sister or my brother, let me know down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Also, don't forget to go follow us on Instagram at you pretty little thing and bacon the cat. And we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>